give me a second to switch my microphone, my um, camera on, and then I can start first. Thank you. That's wonderful. Okay, great. Good morning, everyone, and congratulations for uh, completing your Olive uh, course uh, today, and congratulations to all graduates. Um, thank you, Corin, and other colleagues uh, up and down the country for coordinating running Olive this year. Um, I just enjoyed working with everyone during my course. Thank you very much to all my, the students for engaging with my course, for contributing to that, for coming to courses, for asking questions. As Corinne mentioned, you have my contact detail. So if you have my presentations on the very first page, you can see my email address and my, my WhatsApp number. So at any point, if I can help you with any kind of information, reading your statement, writing reference letters for you, or any kind, other kind of support that you need and I may be able to provide you with, please feel free to drop me email or send me a WhatsApp text and give me some time. I'll come back to you as soon as I can. And please, if you remember from my course, uh, it's all about planning, patience, and perseverance. So please don't stop here. Keep going, keep learning, keep uh, applying for jobs, for university opportunities, and you'll get there for sure um, sooner or later. Thanks, Corinne, that's for me. Thanks, thanks so much, Amir, that's lovely. Um, can we move on to um, one of the other teachers, maybe to um, Erika, who is here at the moment? I know you have different commitments, Erika, so I thought I would just go to you. Hi, everyone. Um, uh, again, congratulations. And uh, yeah, it was great working with you on the creative writing course. It was also great getting to meet some of you um, in person out of London. Um, that was the first time for me coming to Bristol and Manchester. And uh, like Amir said, um, uh, keep writing us, keep in touch, ask us for references, ask us for anything you need. And um, yeah, um, uh, I'll keep it short, but um, I just wanted to say Olive is not just in the UK, not just in London, as you know, and not just in the UK. Um, so today you're joining a community that is actually also in uh, Europe, uh, three different places in Vienna, Budapest and uh, Berlin. And uh, there's a there's a UK Europe wide network of alumni that um, uh, just uh, just keep uh, working on their education and meeting to to share their their insight and all these things that you know, because of, of, uh, of having, you know, navigated this, this system, you actually know really a lot about education um, in a way that other people don't. And uh, yeah, um, uh, we will try to, to keep um, uh, contacting you when there are opportunities or when there are events as well um, that, you know, the Wardner Olive Network is, is organizing. Um, uh, there is a Twitter, um, I will put the link in the chat, where uh, we post opportunities, maybe some online events as well. And um, yeah, so congratulations on, uh, on uh, today and uh, good luck with the future. And I hope we can stay in touch and, uh, and all be part of, of this community together. And, uh... Thank you, Erica. That was lovely and very helpful. We haven't really advertised the Twitter to people, so if you could put that link, that would be really, really good, actually. Um, and as you say, we will make you now the Olive alumni from this year, and then you can get um, uh, ongoing announcements and so on that might be helpful for you. Can we move on to um, maybe to Jan, who many of you have met online, I think. Um, it's lovely to see you, Jan. Yeah. Hello. Yes. Um, wow. Just a fantastic group of people. Congratulations. You've done an amazing job. And um, 
the the one thing that I really hope that you've been able to take from all of this, if I've done anything, it's I hope uh, I've helped you use your existing vocabulary to express yourself more fully with the building the structure. And um, so hopefully I've shown you that no matter what your vocabulary level is, you can still use the construction the structure to to say more and um uh yeah so thank you all for all of your amazing work because you really have worked very very hard and um keep reading keep reading keep writing <laughs> so but thank you and congratulations thank you so much Jan I'm sure you um, everybody here has learned a lot from Jan's class, actually, me included. It's been really interesting. Yeah, so. um, oh, and um, you've got my uh, you you've got my email address. It's at the top of the uh, uh, weekly uh, uh, the the um, the class notes because um, I send it to myself as well. So you can you should be able to see that up there. And uh, it's also in the document that the PDF that I've sent of the class notes. So do stay in touch. Uh, I'd love to know uh, what you're doing as well as if you need any help. So. Thank you so much. Um, that's great. I think we should move to Israel, the other teacher who is here at the moment, I believe. Uh, to see him on screen are you there israel yeah yeah sure oh, there you are. Yeah, hi. thank you um good morning everyone um um i think first of all i would like to say a very big thank you to um all of our dear um olive um, student for your incredible achievement and uh, it's been a privilege to um to have been involved in this uh project uh, in this course, uh, facilitating the uh, digital skill uh, session. Um, I would say it's very commendable to have observed um, your persistence and your effort to attend uh, this program, uh, despite your changing circumstances. And uh, over the past um, months, weeks, um, you've demonstrated a very keen uh, desire to learn. And um, I, I'd like to encourage you to continue to build on that very foundation and uh, uh, maintain um, a regular routine of study. Um, I, I'd like to leave you with this word um, uh, expression uh, by Victor E. Frankl. Um, he says, when we are no longer able to change a situation, uh, we are challenged to change ourselves. Um, I think the reality is that often we don't really have control over certain events and external factors that influence our changing circumstances and condition. Uh, but however, as individual, uh, we want to uh, take that step to improve our condition. And I think you all have demonstrated this through your effort uh, to be part of this you know, uh, course or this program from the very beginning to the end. Um, and also um, for some of you who have expressed interest in the Adobe you know, session, which um, we discussed earlier, I'm still trying to work out how this um, will work out. And uh, obviously I've had some um, meeting with the Adobe um, company here in UK and uh, also some other organization to see how uh, we can facilitate you know, a session. So. Um, I, I would like to wish you all the very best. You do have my contact and uh, please try and get in touch for any, you know, I mean, any academic support. Uh, I'll be more than willing to, to do my best. So uh, that's it for me. Israel, thank you so much. Um, and I think you can see that all the all the teachers have, you know, 
um, being uh, going through this program with you, but they are also, you know, still there for you. And it is not like the whole thing is finished. Um, and just want to echo that we know how, um, how difficult it's often been for people to engage. You know, there are many other things in your lives, many uh, commitments and so on. So we really appreciate working with you. Um, there aren't tutors here at the moment, I think, or from what I can see, but I wonder if any students would like to reflect on um, the course. We'll just leave this in gallery view for a minute. And if you want to uh, say a few words, we'd be, we'd be very happy to hear that. Um, I just forgot to say something and I wanted to say that. I just wanted to say thanks to Corinne because um, <laughs> I've done the administration before. I know how much work it is. It's it's really like it's it's so important. There's so much work that goes on behind the scenes to make everything come together. So uh, I just wanted to thank you. Oh, that's very sweet. But it's been a lot of fun. So thank you, Erica. Um, anyway, are there students who would like to reflect on their own experiences or their um, uh, thoughts about the, the future from here? We'll May I? Yeah, sure. Yeah, okay. Uh, so, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank you very much, everyone. Uh, uh, Erica, Sonia, Israel, Jan, Amir, and everyone who contributed to the program, uh, particularly Corinne uh, for the administration of the course. Uh, and uh, I personally found this course very effective and efficient in many ways. Uh, 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 creative writing was something when I was doing my BSc degree. So I took some English classes and creative writing was one of the things which was on my mind. I was not able to do it at that time. And it was always coming to my mind like what would be in this course. And I found it very interesting. Uh, the digital skills, although I am a computer scientist, but, you know, uh, I learned a lot uh, considering the new uh, platform here in the UK, uh, the policy dimensions of the program, the ethics, which have to be used uh, utilizing the technology medium. Uh, so we were usually having lots of interesting discussion. I hope it was not boring for the rest of the class. <laughs> um, uh, and uh, uh, the academic writing, obviously, it was very important. Uh, I got lots of improvements, uh, in particularly in writing things. Uh, and I learned a lot uh, in this class also. Uh, so uh, I found this very interesting, very effective. And uh, uh, the most important part uh, was, uh, it was for me, it was the first time to be participated in a virtual environment, you know. Uh, so I have done distance courses uh, many times through chatting and things. Uh, I have done like face-to-face -face classes uh, throughout my academic life. But this was the first time to be in a virtual environment with lots of interactions with the classmates. Uh, although we haven't seen each other, but, you know, we know lots of the students in uh, this is a good group and I hope they will stay connected in the future also. So thank you very much. And I would like to say congratulations to my fellows also. And this is a great day for all of us. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, Erica. It's chatting, we were all chatting, I'm sure. Uh, thank you, I think that's true. It is a, a really um, a, a very, um, uh, praiseworthy um, sign of your uh, kind of commitment that you were able to engage so much with Ali, um, and so effectively. Are there any other students who would like to say a few words? I would like to say, please, Corin. Um, yeah, thank you all. And first of all, to Corin, because you always know what we need. You always know what we need before we ask you, and you always reply fast. So I'm struggling with others like ARB to send an email, and I have to wait one week. But with you, no. I don't know how you know what we feel or what we need, and right away you talk with us. So thank you, and for. John, Israel, Amir, Erika, thank you very much because you really know how to make this session useful and joyful, how to attract us to be with you every day. 
thank you very much. I really don't know what to say more, but I, I would like to be with you in every session you have or every course you have. Thank you very much. And for your friendship and for all the students I, I met during this course. Thank you. Thank you so much, Paula. Yeah, are there any other contributions before we move to the presentations, I guess? There may be some other words people want to say. Um, good morning to everybody. Good morning, Alisa. <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of like uh, speechless somehow, but I just have to say thank you to everybody. And I really appreciate the opportunity and the love, the caring, the concern that the tutors have for each, each student. And I will wish that and we have it again soon. Soon. And the one that will last for like more than three months, because to be honest, I learned so many things because this is my first course I've ever done online. But the way you um, tutors uh, take your time, like to put out to the right direction, to give us your time, attention, even though there are some things we have never come across for you, make sure that we learn as if, yes, we are in the classroom, we are in presence of you people, all that. And we really, really appreciate that. Because and to also my colleague students, I would like to say thanks to them and for us to put this into practice. Not like having the the um idea and the, the teachers take their time to teach us and we just keep everything after today. I pray that everything they have taught us, we put it into practice. So whenever we meet next, so wherever we meet next, we can like yes, we we have done something and this is what we gain when you people sacrifice everything for us, like to get up early in the morning to put things in place, <laughs> it's not easy. Even though when the place was cold, but still you make sure that every day you'll be on and make sure that you give us what we need. And even though there are some certain things that we don't know, you make us to know, to aware of it. So thank you so much. And I really, really appreciate everything to all the teachers and to all the students that partake in this course. I pray we meet again soon. Thank you so much, Medusa. I also pray that that sounds like a very hopeful thing to look for. Yeah, um, thank you. Is there anybody else before we move on? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, go on, I'll be next. Hi, are you able to speak, my brother? It's okay? Yeah. 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 Go on. Yeah, yeah. Hello. Uh, I, I, hello. Can everybody hear me, please? Is this Abdi Rahim? Yes, Corinne. Okay, then we'll go to you <coughs> and then uh, Magula afterwards. Okay, fine. Yes. Uh, th thank you so much. I, I really appreciate. Suppose I supposed to give today uh, presentation, but I was not feeling good for the last two days and now I'm at the GB, but I feel like I have to really thank to everybody, all the people who take part on, in this program. It was really effective. Me and my wife, we, we've been taking, sometimes if we did not have Jans to take a part of the classes we've been following on the emails that you sent to us, you've been, and then thank you, you and Eventia for, the kind of support that you give me when I applied for the university and uh, you help me and then you give me advice on my personal statement. And then also you well, you did like a huge part of my CV. And I really appreciate for the, all the effort that you guys are doing. And I will, I will, I don't know how to thank you. Thank you so much for, thank you everybody. And I really, I'm really sorry I did not do the presentation today. Thank you. <laughs> I hope you feel better soon. You know, it sounds, you sound, you don't sound well, I'm getting so hopefully you will. Yeah, thank, thank you. Um, maybe we should uh, ask Mabula to say something and then we will move to the presentations, I think. Mabula, you were waiting, I think. Yeah. Hi. 
Hi, everyone. Uh, first of all, I would like to say thank you so much, Corinne, to make this um, program for us. And then uh, secondly, I would like to say thank you so much for all uh, Olive um, Twitter and teachers who encourage, who uh, encourage us to, to learn much. Um, we are, uh, as an immigration, just we go in college and just learning, but we don't know a lot of stuff, like how do you do personal statement, job application, and uh, that's what we learn here in Olive program. And then I appreciate that. And then it's so much help. Uh, for example, like Amir, who gave me like reverence, and then Sarah, who like um, gave, gave, gave me a feedback for my personal statement. And then now I apply personal statement. Uh, now I apply for university. And then that's, I, I like, so like, um, a glad for you, um, all all of this, um, teachers and, and, and tutor. Um, yeah, I just, I would just like to thank you so much. And then you, you gave us so much. Thank you so much. Hi, thank you, my, thank you, my brother. That was that was lovely to hear. And um, we'll still be here. Thank you for all of you, all of you, if you need help going forward. Um, Green, one, can I ask something? Uh, uh, before we go to the presentation sessions, I think uh, uh, we have prepared the presentation, uh, but. In my belief, it would be good to forward it to the email to Israel or someone so that he would share on the screen because there will be some kind of problems, I think, if we share it individually. I don't know. This just came to my mind. Thank you, Abdul. Um, I have got three of these presentations already. I didn't know if you had slides or not, but um, you can actually share them yourself because um, we will... I think you're able to share from what I can see. I'm just going to check the security setting. Yeah, you can share yourself, Abdul. And I think you're going to be giving the first presentation, in fact. So, what I think I will do now is um, go to uh, change our view so that we have the speaker. Oh, hi, Lewis here. Okay, hi, hi. Um, <laughs> Okay, so Abdul, um, I don't know if you can do a share screen yourself from your PowerPoint. Um, I think I just did a configuration uh, in a new computer. So I tried, it's giving me some kind of, uh, you know, messages and things. Is this possible to send it to you in an email in a minute? Yes, or you can send it to Israel. If you've already sent it, Israel can then share the screen from his computer. Israel, if you're there. Yeah, I, I'm here, but... Um, Did you see it? Did it come to you yet? Or no? um, just a moment, let me have a look. Want to look too? Uh, nothing has come in yet, yeah. After, did you send it to... Oh, it, it will send it to you directly. Um, since... Yeah, you can send it to me. Yeah. Okay, have, you, have you sent it? Let me just um, myself actually. I'm just going to share the screen for what we have coming next. So Abdul Rahim is at the um, uh, doctors, unfortunately. Abdul is about to do this. Uh, presentation with us. I'm sure I think it's not clear, but the rest of you. Uh, yeah. So we have, I think, five presentations probably. Uh, Abdul? I, I, I send it to you. You should have received it. I send it to Corinne and I send it to Israel also. Okay. Oh, I see it. I see it. That's a PDF. Oh, it's a PDF. Okay. I 
Gail, are you having a look at it? You may be quicker than me. <laughs> um, I think since you're moderating the event, it might be good to... <laughs> I'm having a little bit of trouble because of an ODP format. I don't know if you know even what that is. <laughs> okay, so you, you want me to do it from here? Uh, if you can try, because the, it's, a, it's already a, it's a zip format, so I'm, it's taking time. You might be quicker than me. Coming as a PDF. That's right. I'm, that's right, isn't it, Abdul? You, you sent it as a PDF. Oh, um, can, can you oh, see? Oh, amazing! Yeah, yeah. excellent. Oh, okay. Thank you so much. Okay. So we're going to hand over to Abdul now. Uh, okay. Shall we start? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Please um, go ahead. Okay. Uh, so hello again uh, this uh, was actually a brief presentation that i taught of, about lots of things uh, and then i thought it would be better uh, since the time was very limited like five minutes or so so i tried to put lots of ideas uh, in very uh, short form uh, so uh, how the life is here for me in the uk and how i see the future uh, so uh, can you go ahead to the next slide? Uh, just a moment, please. Okay. I think it's not responding. We can see it well like this, so it should be okay. Okay, can you see it now? Yeah. Is it uh, <clears throat> so it has been less than a year uh, since I arrived here to the UK together with my family. Uh, so obviously uh, here in the United Ken Kingdom, I see a lot of opportunities uh, for a good future for me and my family, uh, uh, considering the education, uh, job opportunities and a good future. Uh, however, there are some paradoxes of, uh, you know, opportunities and challenges. Uh, for example, the climate, uh, lifestyle, uh, the cultural trend. So every time uh, uh, my children goes to school and they come back, so they have like those viral diseases and infections, uh, you know, the running nose, head lice, and <laughs> lots of other things that I have to deal with. The lifestyle is obviously changed and uh, sometimes they don't like the food here in the hotel, uh, so we are struggling uh, with that also. Uh, the culture trend is there, how to behave with people, how to behave in the class and things, because they are totally new to the environment here. Uh, particularly, job is one of the things that uh, I have to do. So uh, my uh, existing qualification and experience uh, is also a challenge because I... When I was counting my cert certificates, uh, I mean, different certification courses that I have done so far, it was like 20 to 25. But when I see the uh, uh, working platform here in the UK, uh, so most of them, or I would say all of them are uh, uh, some kind of useless and I have to renew it or do something different. So these are the challenges that I see. Uh, but obviously there are some uh, opportunities in the future also. Uh, uh, can you move to the next slide? 
for a bright future, uh, what I think, uh, so I set up goals and uh, there are very simple goals that I set for my future. Uh, number one is the financial independency. Uh, so um, I believe that I have, uh, me and my family shouldn't be always an universal credit. Uh, we have to be financially independent. We have to be uh, dependent on the refugee aid. Um, and uh, it's not only about supporting my family. I have to be able to support others here and uh, ultimately contribute to the country's economy. Uh, the second thing, uh, the second goal that I have set for my future is uh, integration in the society. Uh, and integration in the society is in many meanings. Uh, the tolerance in this society is very good. Uh, respect, social behaviors, job opportunities and everything. Uh, th these are not the things that I'm going to uh, accomplish uh, in uh, short term, these are the things that I have to contribute and we have to acquire uh, getting these things. And obviously, uh, I have to be able together with my family for protecting and building values. Uh, so when we left the country and we came here, so uh, there are, were some values and there are some values. Uh, in the meantime, uh, I mean, considering this uh, new lifestyle and this uh, new platform of development. We have to uh, work on building those values also. Uh, there are a number of, you know, like family values, social values, religious values. So uh, going uh, towards achieving those goals, uh, like the financial independence and uh, integration in the society, getting good jobs and progress in career and education, uh, similarly, uh, I have to be focusing on uh, building those values also. Can you go to next slide? Uh, so uh, how I will be able to achieve those goals? Uh, so I thought with myself, as I mentioned early, considering my existing experience in a different world and my education and certifications in different world. And now here, I have to make a toolkit and... Uh, build that toolkit with the things, with the right things and resources which are required for the uh, UK workforce. Um, and here, uh, for example, getting a driving license is an important thing. I could drive over there, <laughs> but that license is not going to work for me. I have to get a UK license in here, which is really, really important. Uh, you know, Olive program was very good. Uh, this was another example of uh, getting uh, the tools in my toolkit. Uh, data, data scientist certification course is important for me uh, because I have done computer science, I have done different courses, but here certifications are required for uh, building up the career. DPSI is another thing, which is diploma for public service interpretation, uh, which I have started working on this also. And the Refugee Aid is an organization they are helping with me and doing that the second thing will be uh, building potential. So I uh, put it a little bit different because uh, when it comes to potential, um, that's mostly the higher education. Uh, so uh, like many of the teachers mentioned early also, uh, education and learning is something that is uh, a lifelong habit. It's not something that's going to be ended after one year or two years. So I have uh, my... Uh, uh, goals for the futures and uh, those are like uh, one of them is getting the PhD uh, in uh, you know political science which is one of the things that I have in my mind uh, but obviously uh, as we discuss this a lot there are you know things they are good goals but I leave it for you know a little bit um, uh, for the future because I considering the challenges that I mentioned at the moment I will not be able to do that but that's something which which I have to do it team building and motivation that's interesting uh, someone may think like I don't have a team I don't have you know an organization to lead but for me uh, my team is my family uh, and uh, believe me this is like one of the reasons that I always discuss with the job center also, I have eight children, seven of them goes to schools and colleges and things. So I dedicated my uh, uh, two years for them because I have to 
uh, uh, keep their hands, you know, and work with them because every day there are meeting in the schools. Uh, there are meeting with the GP vaccinations and lots of other things. And if they uh, do a little bit good in everything, I appreciate it. I motivate them and they are doing very good. Uh, so I strongly believe they got uh, very good in, in the first year. And after one year, they will be on their own feet. Uh, balance is the last thing. Uh, that's uh, something that I have to consider. Uh, balance in everything, you know. Uh, so back in the country, we had lots of lo a lot of time. Here, we don't have a lot of, of time for a lot of things. So there is career, there is family, there is self-development, there are all other things. Uh, the main important thing is uh, the balance that I have to uh, consider in all those things. Um, can you move to the next stage? I don't know if you... So thank you. This was all I was able to <laughs> say in five minutes. Abdul, thank you so much. That was really, really interesting. And I think helpful, actually, the way that you framed everything. Yeah, everybody is clapping. I don't know if anybody would like to say a couple of words in response. Uh, we don't have time for a long discussion of it, but if you did want to, then please go ahead. Okay, it seems like we may have just going, we're just going to be reflecting on Abdul's words here and then we will move on to the next presentation, which I think is going to be, if we're going alphabetically, Bashir. So Bashir, I'm just going to see if I can find your PowerPoint. Oh, I seem to have it here. So are you there, Bashir? Oh, it's the wrong one, sorry. Let's see if I can find it. Hello, ma'am. Hi, let me see if I can share your PowerPoint. It's still sharing the wrong one, um, unfortunately, but here, let me see if I can get rid of it. Thank you, everyone. I hope you are happy and successful. Today, I'm very happy to participate uh, in the last graduation ceremony. Please, of all. Can I just check people can see your PowerPoint? Is that okay? Yeah. You can see it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Okay. Okay, yeah, you. we can see it. Oh, great. Thank you. First of all, I'm very grateful to all your teachers for your cooperation and teaching. Although my English reading has some problem, thank you for listening to me. Today, I want to share something about Afghanistan with you. Uh, uh, please, sir, next. Uh, uh, today, I want to talk about the geography of Afghanistan, rivers and lakes, economy, religion, ethnic and official language, uh, tourism, population, climate, climate uh, media and education, use and holiday and festival, transportation and sports. Uh, please, next. <laughs> I'm so sorry because my English is <laughs> a little bit have problem. Afghanistan is a landlocked country located in Central Asia and South Asia. Uh, it's bordered by Pakistan to the south and the east, Iran to the west, uh, Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, and Tajikistan to the north, and China the northwest. Afghanistan has a ragged and small. Can in white or similar in Afghanistan, Kandahar, Mazar, and Herat. The highest in Afghanistan is Mount Nosha, which stands 7,492 7, meters above sea level. And another uh, mount, uh, mount of Afghanistan is uh, Uibaba and Siyoku, Tribandi, Turkestan, and large, a big, uh, huge uh, mountains in uh, Hindu Kush. 
Rivers and lakes of Afghanistan. Afghanistan received snow between November and March, which gradually melts into numerous rivers, streams, canals, lakes, ponds, and springs. But most of the country's fresh water continues to flow into neighboring countries. It loses about two thirds of its water to neighboring Pakistan, Iran, Tajikistan, Pakistan, and Turkmenistan. And the famous uh, rivers of Afghanistan, Amudarya, Amu River, and Helmand River, Kabul River, Kunar River. Please, sir, next slide. Economy. Uh, as a per capita is uh, 2004, uh, 2024 and dollars, despite having one trillion dollars for more and mineral deposit. Afghan wreck are one of Afghanistan's main exports. Afghan Zafran has been recognized as the world, world's best and another uh, important attempts to uh, export uh, dairy and fresh fruit and uh, medicinal plants or fruits. Corporate, uh, corporate living is an ancient practice in Afghanistan, Afghanistan and many of these are still Have we lost the sound, Bashir? Have other people lost the sound on this a bit? Yeah, okay. we lost the sound, yeah. Bashir, we can't hear I'm wondering, Bashir, if you have you logged up? Oh, it seems like we've, we've actually lost Bashir. Is that right? Huh. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So listen, let me suggest that we wait because um, I mean, we'll go on to the next presentation, and then hopefully Bashir will be able to get back in. Um, uh, because yeah, you, as you may guess, Priya Bashir has been a geography student, and we have a lot to learn about Afghanistan from his his. Yeah, learning. yeah. I would just suggest instead of. Uh, we will wait for some time, or you can go to the next next slide. At least we can see the presentation. Oh, okay. Well, we can show you the presentation. That's a very good plan. Thank you. After the carpets, we have the religion slide. Then we have the ethnic groups and languages. So we are recording this. So if you need to know more, you can get back to it. Then we have the tourism. Which is smallish population. This is a good plan if you are doing presentations on this kind of topic for, for any future presentations, actually. Climate. Actually, has been extremely thorough. Media and entertainment. Education. Which includes the exclusion of female teachers and students in this presentation. Cuisine. I can tell you myself, this is very delicious. Um, I'm sure you all know. Holidays. Religious holidays. Transport. Sports. Thank you. Well, in his absence, thank you very much, Bashir. We can maybe go back, but uh, I think we have a reasonable number of presentations. So let's stop here uh, for Bashir's one and continue with uh, Farhad. If you're there, Farhad. Hello, dear Karim, good evening. Uh, hello, Hi. can you hear me? 
Yes, here is your PowerPoint. Uh, no, not yet. Yes. Uh, hello, everyone, and dear Master Zolive. Uh, I'm so happy to meet you today. And before everything else, I congratulate everyone that we're finishing the array in Olive. Today, I'm going to give a brief explanation of cybersecurity, which is one of the most important areas of human life. Uh, I also have a PowerPoint that I want to share with you. Please, Karin, if you can share with us. I'm going to try. Hold on, Fahad. Uh, yeah, here we go. Uh, no, I, I think it's, it's not for me. Can you see it? No, no, no. It's my little so karma. Oh, you it's can see me. this is? No, no, no. You, you show it before. Uh... Okay, I clicked on your one, but let me see again. <laughs> Let's try it one more time. Yes. Is this showing now? Yes. Okay, it's not in the best view. Let me see if I can improve the view. Uh, okay, great. Uh, the, for, uh, the, at the first uh, slide, uh, uh, we have question, why we need cybersecurity and uh, where the future of cybersecurity goes. Uh, at the reality, um, in today's age, all organization and individual are using internet and cyberspace to carry out uh, their activities from banking and online shopping uh, to machine computer system in organization. Uh, but the internet and cyberspace have uh, become the virtual part of, of life. And how as technology advances to our cyber attacks, uh, but it's important, uh, attempts to access personal, economic or uh, particular information it uh, can be extremely damaging to individual and organization. But uh, without security in uh, cyberspace, uh, access to personal and sensitive information, bank account death, and data destruction and erosion in, uh, into computer system is possible. But uh, among many other problems, uh, it included that. Uh, while increased uh, use of information and communication technology provides greater access uh, to personal and sensitive information. And efforts to enforce cybersecurity are crucial for privacy and security or individual and organization. Uh, at the uh, first second slide, it's uh, cybersecurity or artificial intelligence. <laughs> Uh, Hello, Fahad, are you there? We've just muted the other um, voice. Okay, uh, uh, please come back to the second slide about the cyber security and artificial intelligence. Yes, uh, uh, we have some of benefits about the cyber security and artificial intelligence. They are uh, integrated uh, um, for uh, technology. Uh, we have the cyber security and artificial intelligence. Uh, aren't two complicated areas. Uh, they are interconnected and artificial intelligence uh, as a one of the advanced technology for us and uh, plays a very important role in cyber security industry. Uh, but because of human uh, uh, limitation uh, in data processing and detecting cyber threats, artificial can be used as one of the key tools in cybersecurity. Uh, we have some points uh, I mentioned to that. For first one, artificial intelligence can be used to identify weakness to security system, reduce response time to cyber attacks, detect and prevent cyber threats, analyze user behavior, as well as improve for detection methods and payment system, and so on. Use also, use also artificial intelligence with pattern detection capability can be used in preventing cyber attacks and finding vulnerabilities. 
Uh, and some uh, artificial intelligence with access to big data and powerful processing capabilities is being used as a key tool uh, in cybersecurity and cyber attack prevention. Using artificial intelligence detecting and preventing cyber threats is done more effectively and efficiently. Uh, uh, but uh, at the next one, uh, next slide, uh, please. Uh, we mentioned to the cost of cybersecurity uh, at this time. It is important uh, about us because uh, uh, the some of the organization uh, uses that for uh, digital war. Uh, cybersecurity is one of the most important productive factors for organization and company in today's digital war. Without proper security, organization uh, can be compromised causing loss of confidential data and destruction of important data. Uh, on the other hand, the uh, cost of using cybersecurity or organization can vary. The use of cybersecurity involves uh, a variety of costs, including the hardware and software cost required uh, to run an effective security system, and the cost of training employees uh, to security tools, and the cost of obtaining of security cer uh, certification uh, require run of their security system. Uh, and also um, the cost of uh, using uh, cybersecurity for organization uh, include the cost of maintaining and updating security system, technical support costs, and research and development costs. Uh, however, the costs of using cybersecurity are much lower than the costs of cyber attacks and data uh, destruction. Economic losses and loss sales and loss related to employee health and security. For this reason, the use of cybersecurity has long-term and economic benefits uh, for organization. Uh, the technical support cost of R&D costs was the most important reason for cybersecurity use uh, in organization and the near of the future. And thank you so much for next uh, slide, uh, please. Now, what is uh, what will the future of the cybersecurity look like? Uh, uh, the the cybersecurity will face new changes in the future. No jobs due to the increasing growth of the technology and greater connectivity of devices uh, on the internet. And some of the future challenges the field of cybersecurity uh, included uh, four items. Uh, for first one is uh, wireless communication. We know the 5G technology and wireless communication. Uh, this new technology have made a volume of information transmitted between uh, devices even higher. Uh, this uh, will directly to increase security challenges in the field of wireless communication. Uh, for next one, uh, the, the more includes uh, cyber attacks. Um, um, the, in the future, the cyber attacks will become smarter uh, to, and more uh, complex. These attacks can be carried out using machine learning and artificial intelligence automatically and uh, without the need for human in, in intervention. And for the third one, uh, extension of Internet of Things uh, as the number of devices connected to the internet increases and the uh, connection for cyber attacks are also increasing. Uh, this device can be security weaknesses and it becomes entry point for uh, cyber attacks. And for last one, uh, developing cryptographic uh, technology uh, by standard using um, encryption technology, cyber attacks can be protected. Uh, however, the developer encryption uh, technology uh, will really also lead to development and new methods uh, for cyber attacks. It, uh, it, I think it's, uh, four of them um, uh, it's important uh, option about the uh, a way for the security in the future. And uh, I hope so. I have been able to give a good uh, explanation about the cyber security, but at the short time, uh, I've chosen the full study for myself at the future. Uh, um, and thank you so much, dear Carl. Uh, uh, I wish the best and best for you at the, your uh, way in the future. Thank you so much. Uh, excuse me, the current can you hear me? 
I yes, I couldn't hear your voice. Okay, sorry. Thank you so much for that. That was really uh, interesting and um, stuff that a lot of us don't know very much about. So um, thank you. Um, thank really you. Good to hear about it. Um, thank you. God bless you. God bless you, Mrs. Kinga. Do we have any questions for Fahad about it? No, thank you so much. Uh, wish the best for all of you for the future of your life uh, and uh, wish the best for them. Thank, thank you. you. Um, Carla has just messaged us that she's not able to do her presentation because she has to go to one of her children's school. Uh, she's just been called because she has to go. Uh, so, you know, this is just one of the examples of how committed all the students have been, that it's very difficult when you have children at school and work and asylum cases and hotels that you're living in and all this to deal with. It's a, a very complex situation and we, we think you've all done amazingly to, um, to commit to all even in the first place. Um, so we do have a couple of other presentations listed here. One is from Jad. So I wonder if Jad, you would like to take the screen and um, I know you don't have a PowerPoint, but please just uh, talk about your, your topic. Are you there, Jad? Yes, I was, I was not sure if you were talking to me or no. I was talking to you, yeah. <laughs> Are you okay to do your presentation? Yes, I'm fine. It's not gonna be a presentation. Um, it's going to be just, I'm going to talk about my experience. This is also a presentation. Thank you very much. So, okay, I attended uh, Amir's class and uh, Jan class. Uh, okay, so what I did, I wanted to apply for universities and I needed um, the IELTS to do so. So I joined Jan class uh, and um, I got so many tips about how to like, I kind of cheat the exam. <laughs> and she also uh, shared with us a lot of um, um, hmm, uh, shared with a YouTube channel with someone called Asia. And that was very helpful. Uh, I checked so many videos for her. And I also practiced on uh, the, um, hmm, she shared with us a document with a lot of um, IELTS exams. I also practiced on that. Um, and uh, from uh, Amir's class, I took uh, the first few sessions when he was talking about universities. And for, uh, um, huh. <laughs> uh, post-grad students, and he shared a lot, like few interesting um, links. I took from them the one of UCAS. I registered and found the all the universities that have scholarships. I downloaded this um, present this uh, document and printed it and checked university by university because I didn't want to miss any university that have a good class. Uh, that took me around two weeks to do. <laughs> Um, okay, after that, I um, found, um, I think from 100 something universities, I found only two that I really wanted to go to and three or four that I was like, okay, just to apply for more than two universities, I'm just gonna apply to those. And I also applied to RefuAid. It was also a link from Amir's class. I, they contacted me immediately the next day or the same day. I'm not sure about that. And they told me that they will be able to offer me the IELTS exam if I take the class with them. So I explained my situation that I don't have time to start in September, the new class, because the universities will be already started. So I need to take the exam as soon as possible. So they shared me a link to their online class. It's not something that uh, with a teacher or tutor, it's uh, automated class. So um, I started with it. Um, I did more than half of it. And then um, Corinne told us that we can apply to do the Duolingo exam. 
So I applied for that as well, and I got immediate reply. I practiced for a week or two for the exam, and I did it. I got the exact uh, grade that I needed to go to York University because I already applied there, and um, there they were very like um, helpful, and they didn't tell me that I can't or there are missing stuff. So. Even though I was a bit nagging because I didn't have a lot of time as I wanted to apply for the scholarship as well. So they sent me an unofficial email that they will accept my application and they will send me the official one soon. So I did the exam, I sent it to them. And after a week, I think they sent me the official uh, acceptance. And I also met Erica during that time. And we talked about. Um, what should I do with Goldsmiths? Because they didn't want to accept the um, Duolingo exam. So the, it's not on their website, but I said that I will send them an email and I did. I sent them an email explaining my situation and telling them that this is the exam I did and this is my grade. Um, even though I chat with someone, it wasn't helpful at all. The, the person that was speaking to me told me that I don't think it's gonna work, but I can share you the I can share with you the email of the immigration department who deal with the English stuff. So I said, okay, yeah, I'm fine. I'm ready to do that. I sent them an email. And uh, after a week, yeah, it took a week, they sent me an email that they will check with someone if they can make this exception. And uh, last week, I think, yeah, last week on Wednesday, they sent me an email that the... the um, the third person who's in charge of the department said that they will accept this time my English exam and I can just have, yeah, I can, <laughs> I can send the missing documents. They wanted other documents, a questionnaire of 20 questions about why I want to participate in this course. And they also wanted a Pecha Kucha, so I couldn't escape that. Uh, I have a deadline on Wednesday, so uh, and also they wanted my short film to be uh, subtitled in English. I did that. I answered the questions. I have an idea about the picture. Uh, what am I going to be talking about? I didn't do it yet, so I'm going to be working on it to, between today and tomorrow to be ready. And yeah, hopefully I will get to Goldsmith. But if not, I have a spot now at your and waiting for the scholarship. I applied last Monday. And tomorrow is the deadline. So starting tomorrow, I think I'm going to hear from them anytime. So yeah, I hope for the best. <laughs> Thank you very much, Chad. Have you got any advice for other people going through this process? Because you have had to deal with lots of small difficulties on the way. Um, yeah, my advice if, is that if there's something that you don't think that you have a document or a missing, uh, I don't know, anything missing, you can contact the university and they might help you because I didn't expect at all that Goldsmiths will accept my Duolingo exam and they did. So, and also I want to thank um, Hannah Reeves because I always, uh, I was always in contact with her and I sent her my statement and my, um, scholarship questionnaire so she also helped me with a few stuff and she like uh, gave me advice how to amend it and make it nicer better so yeah also i i'm grateful for that <laughs> i'm gonna st i'm gonna stay in contact with you all and i'm gonna let you know if i get to any of the universities or what's gonna happen with me <laughs> thank you so Good much luck anyway <laughs> this is this is so uh, great. Good luck, anyway. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Magula. Is any does anybody else want to ask uh, Jan any questions? Or Amir, would you like to comment on this process? I think I, I I have two main points to share. First of all, congratulations and well done to all presenters. I think there are two things that I would like to remind everyone of. The first one is the role of practice and preparation, because like. In some cases, you may think my English is not good, and I understand that we are all learning English. I'm learning English like you. I'm in different stage than, than you, but it's through pre preparation and practice that you can do 
most of the things that you need to do. Like if going back to presentation, I was quite impressed by presentation of Arad, Bashir, and Abdul. And the level of presentation was beyond their level of English. That was mainly because they spent time to prepare and to practice. And that's it. So as long as you are prepared to uh, spend time, you will be fine regardless of your level of English. So that's first thing. Don't be uh, that much uh, concerned about my English is not good. You need to keep learning. But with preparation, as Jan mentioned, with the limited English that you have, if you learn how to use it, you'll be successful. The second part, and thank, thanks to Jad, I think it's important to be curious and to search for information and go and information is, is out there on internet, different places you can find information. But as he, he said, it's important to spend time. We can just give you the, the links and the leads, but it's you who, who need to spend time. He said two weeks, which I was quite impressed. So make sure that you spend enough time to take those informations that you need. And then the second point is about negotiation. So as I frequently mentioned in my course, uh, most of the things in university application process is open to negotiation. If they say no, don't take it as the last word, okay? Always try to call someone, always try to write an email. If you, if you are not confident enough, ask someone else. I'm quite happy if anyone wants me to write an email to university, call universities to, to negotiate with them. So if they say no, there is always an opportunity for negotiation. So um, always be persistent and assertive and try to uh, make the case that you are a good candidate to go to university. Thanks, Corinne. Thank you, Amir. I think also you can hear from Jad's account that, you know, he took a lot of um, care. He's still having to take a lot of care with the applications and the scholarship applications. Each one you have to think about for this university, this program. So it's unfortunately not always straightforward. Um, but when you, when you put in that effort, then the university does respond, I think. So well done. Um, I would love to move to the last presentation we are waiting for, which is from Madusu. Uh, Madusu, are you there? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> uh, let me see if I can find your presentation and get it up on the screen for you. All right, ma'am, thank you. Oh, we are still, we still have far hands here. Sorry, I'm trying to get rid of this. And, uh, sorry. Um, let me go back and see if I can get rid of um, this one. Maybe she's there. Can you see this one? Not yet. Right, hold on, let me try again. Are you seeing this? Yes, ma'am. Here we go. Okay, something encouraging and uh, uh, inspiring for our last presentation from Madusu. Please go ahead. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. Um, the presentation that I'm going to present is a pro life story, anyway. Physical exercise promotes friendship and a healthy lifestyle. In life, there are so many things that we want, we need, and we focus on them without focusing on our health. Are you done with this? Hi, can you see this? Oh, okay. Introduction. Sorry, Madusu. Many, okay, it's okay, it's okay. Many refugees and asylum seekers 
have complex of mental health needs. And it can intensify due to the circumstances and challenges we are having. From personal experiences, I want to talk about how physical exercise has helped me to stay active. Stay active. Personal exercise keep me healthy and active. From my early childhood, I love participating in sport activities. And in my school days, I was fully involved in field and track and indoor sport activities, competing in many events and competition back in my country. At a point, I learned Taekwondo for self-defense to protect myself. My training in competitive sport. In 2017, I decided to focus on wrestling. I had an opportunity to participate and compete at the Commonwealth Games 2022. The experience I have helped me to build a new friendship and a new changing life experiences. In conclusion, it's important to engage in physical exercise to stay healthy and active. Participating in physical exercise can help to promote friendship in the community, in a new country away from family members and friends. Physical exercise has improved my mental health, reduce risk of diseases, and it has helped me to make new friends. Thank you. We had no clue, I think, that we were speaking with a national wrestling champion. <laughs> Thank you. And if you have any question, I'll be glad to answer some, <laughs> if, if, if we still have time. I think we definitely have a few moments. If anybody wants to question Madusu about how to improve their sporting performance or just <laughs> their general health, she could obviously advise. Do we have any other Commonwealth or Olympic champions here? I don't think we probably do. No, <laughs> I think so interesting. Thank you. Madhusu, yeah. how do you do this when you are not in a situation like before when you were training in a national team and so on? How do you manage to do this now? Um, actually for the past several months, I've not been training, but like I've been trying to do physical fitness in my room, I have my mat. And sometimes I go out for jogging because it's part of me because from childhood I've been doing sport and I love it. Whenever I'm doing it, I find pleasure in it and I forget about my stress and the, forget about certain things that are playing in my mind whenever I'm doing sport. So presently I go, I goggles and I saw a school, Life Fighting Factory, which I went there and discussed with the coach that this is my situation, but I did not tell him that I'm a, a Commonwealth competitive person because I don't want him to look me that kind of way like the money is there or maybe I'm just acting up. So I just explained my situation and, for, and, and kept my real identity to, to achieve what I want. So when I discussed it with him, he said, okay, 
because it worked at my structure and, and they give me a trial, which I prove it. They started asking, have you been doing well sleep? I said, sorry, I lied to them because they will not have that time to go and check because I know what I want. So I told them, no, I've been doing sport, but not wrestling because I told them that I'm doing Taekwondo for the past year. So I'm using that experience to compete in wrestling um, sport because I find it interesting. He said, okay, since we are looking out for a lady, no problem, we can assist you. But like monthly, you have to be paying. I said, I don't have that money because I'm not working. I'm just an asylum seeker. He said, okay, well, let's see what will happen. I might log you once in a week so that I can be catch up what we are doing. I said, okay, so no problem <laughs> because it's something I want. I know that in the near future, if I have the um, opportunity, I'll be paid, which I know is not a free thing. And because I want to compete and my dream is not a stop at the Commonwealth game, I want to be like, be that person. Like there was, we met, I said, I want to be an icon and I want to use this part to fulfill that my dream. So I see. Expecting. <laughs> Probably all of us. Thank you. What a wonderful way to finish the presentations, I think. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's wonderful to hear from you. Um, we are just going to move on now to a part that I haven't really uh, uh, done with um, Olive before, but normally what happens is that we read out the people who have their certificates from Olive. I'm just gonna go to our, uh, on the correct screen, uh, which I can't now. Okay, well, hold on. I'm gonna see if I can find the correct screen and then I will uh, upload it for us. A few minutes. Okay, here we go. So we've had uh, the presentations that we were able to have today. Um, uh, unfortunately, it looks like I don't actually have this listing properly uh, displayed. Let me see if I can uh, find it in a better place. Okay, so this is the certificate that the people will get who have uh, completed um, a consistent engagement with Olive, either through coming to the classes or through the catch-up videos or through engaging with the tutors uh, or through coming to the in-person meetings or some combination of that. That's what you will, um, uh, that's the, um, the, the certificate that you'll get in by post. If you have, I will send an email about this, but if you have changed your address from your registration, then please do send us the new address because um, otherwise we won't send it to the correct place. 
So this is the list of people that have um, received certificates. And I'm wondering if I could just ask the teachers who are here if they could each read out a column of those names. Um, Israel, I'm, I can see that you're there. Would you be able to do that, starting with one of the columns? All right, OK. Thank you. OK, so I'll start from the one from the, from the left, right? Alphabet, okay, okay. Um, Abdurrahim Hussein, um, Abdul Martin Gaffa, I hope um, I pronounce that well. Abdullah Kondos, Ahmed Zakria, Aman Assad, Arezu Omid, Ayesha Ali, Bashi Abdullahi, Bashi Khan Bawa, Bashi Fatih Zadeh, Benam Egbali, Dunya Hussein, Elmi Abdi, El Nu Nu. I hope I did pronounce that very well. Okay. Thanks so much. I wonder if you're, um, if, um, uh, is Amir still there? Or we can ask Jan, I'm not sure if Amir is there. Jan, would you? I'm here, Corinne, if you, if you Oh, you are. are, yeah, please, could you take the next column? Yes, I, I'm, I'm going to read the, the, the column in between. Congratulations to MV Obaibi, Wuhunuma, Farhad Razai, Fatima Abaiji, Faisal Mohammadi, Halib Hilo, Hala Yarbakali, Hassan Morshid, Hassan Harith, Intisar Avar, Jad Habib, Kumba Kamara, future world and Olympic champion Maduso Kuroma, Magbula Ali, and Majid Mubahidnia. Congratulations, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you. So Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so and thank you to everyone that made it through. Thank you so much. We really appreciate you all. Thank you. <laughs> can we move to the third column now? If Jan is ready, Jan. Yep, you... I can do that. Thank you. I'll try and do as well as everyone else. A huge congratulations to Mirella Kurti. Mohammed Hirsi, Mohammed Omar, Mohammed Foro, Mohammed Kanjar, Mohammed Karimi, Nemelin Anko, Oritha Daniel, Rehab Abdemalik, Sam Pordale, or Porde, yeah, Pordale, and Sawara Ali, and Siga Gematsion. Congratulations to all of you. Excellent. We should give you Thank all you. A, big, a big round of applause. <laughs> so you will receive some certificates and please remember to um, send a note if your um, address has changed, but please give the certificates a week or so because they have to go through a, a posting process. So thank you. So next steps, we have two still um, meetings in person in Bristol uh, this Saturday, and then one in London on the 3rd of the 5th. Uh, we'll send the details on the email. As you might have heard from your tutors, but your tutors have all said that they will be willing to continue working with you. So if you need to contact them at any points, um, you can do that. You will still get emails with information. I mean, some, some of the information we may repeat so that you still have you know, the information about next courses coming up that you can access on Academic English and IELTS, for instance. If you want to opt out, then just send an email saying um, uh, unsubscribe or no more emails to that address, no problem. Um, you are going to be contacted by one of the tutors called Polly about uh, doing a feedback survey, uh, which will be anonymous and maybe taking part in some feedback discussions so that we can try to develop the program for the future. 
Uh, you'd be very, you'd be very grateful if you are able to do that. That will happen in the next week or so. And then we hope also to have some ongoing activities, like a couple of presentations in the in, in the autumn. Even if we are not running Olive like this, we will have a couple of presentations on um, university applications and scholarships and so on. Um, and we may, if you feel like it, we may have some other um, speakers, uh, some discussions and some conversation classes if you want to keep going with uh, English with college. Uh, so yeah, finally for me, please do just keep in touch and tell us how everything is going. Uh, it's been a wonderful experience working with you. Thank you so much. Does anybody want to add anything? Uh, yeah, Corinne. Hi. Hi. Just say thank you for all tutors and uh, for you as well at the same time for the program. Thank you so much for your dedication of the students for Amir. And I have met uh, Erica with in person presentation. Uh, they have been very helpful, and I believe that education is the best way to integrate or in just to integrate in the new uh, country, new, uh, fruitful and important to us. And I would like to say thank you so much for my tutors and everybody who's involving on this uh, program. Thank you so much, Helen. Very nice to hear from you. Um, with that, I think we've probably reached the end. We can um, wrap up. And thanks to everybody who's come and spent time together today. Um, and be proud of yourselves and uh, pat yourselves on the back, as, as the English expression goes, because you've done really well. Um, so uh, thank you again, and uh, we'll be in touch. And please be in touch. Thank you very much, Karine. We will be in touch. Thank you. Yeah, we're looking for, for further education with the yeah. Olive um, because it's really helpful and support. Yeah. Thank you, yeah. Thank you so much. We do, we do need <laughs> Olive actually because a part of us now. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you so much, Mr. Ishmael. I really appreciate you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Take care, everybody. See you soon. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Much. Thank you. Thank you. We are very happy for you. Bye, everyone. See you thank soon. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. We still, we still have that. We still have like 27 minutes to <laughs> We still have what? We still have like 27, 25 minutes. We're still at 1230. You said 1230. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your presentation. It was lovely. <laughs> Thank you.